So let's begin. We are on week four of this series, Prayers and Meditations by the Mother. And today we have uh, two prayers with us. January 7, 1914 and January 8, 1914. So I would request if anyone would like to start beginning by first reading the prayer, the first prayer, and then sharing anything that resonated from the prayer. Yeah, anyone who wants to go first, take up the first prayer. Yashwita, yeah. January 7th, 1914. Give them all, O Lord, thy peace and light. Open their blinded eyes and their darkened understanding. Calm their futile worries and their vain anxieties. Turn their gaze away from themselves and give them the joy of being consecrated to thy work without calculation or mental reservation. Let thy beauty flower in all things. Awaken thy love in all hearts so that thy eternally progressive order may be realized upon earth and thy harmony be spread until the day all becomes thyself in perfect purity and peace. Oh, let all tears be wiped away, all sufferings relieved, all anguish dispelled and let calm serenity dwell in every heart and powerful certitude strengthen every mind. Let thy life flow through all like a regenerating stream that all may turn to thee and draw from that contemplation the energy for all victories. The whole prayer is so beautiful that, you know, like even as I, I read it, like I feel so energized, you know, it feels very nourishing. And just, you know, like reading and going through the lines and uh, reflecting and staying with it is like, uh, you know, a, a very different experience. So, so I read it uh, uh, today uh, uh, in the afternoon also. And uh, at that time also I felt so good because just yesterday I was in a situation where, you know, like with the... Uh, uh, many uh, loved ones relatives around like there's so many perspectives and each one is looking for a validation and seeking that validation from you and uh, you know like and you uh, you just uh, understand that uh, ye bhi theek hai, wo bhi theek hai. so you know like uh, aap kisi ko, uh, ऐसे support नहीं कर पाते और आपको समझ आता है कि वो god like you know uh, when you know like i am able to see this so uh please uh, you know like unko bhi ye perspective you know help them to see it and you just and yet you know like uh, what i feel is like i just provided this listening your uh to uh, uh, a relative and uh, then uh, today i found some uh positive uh you know like i, I got a message and it just felt that okay though i in my heart i thought ki uh tk aapka perspective hai and uh, uh, i i see more and yet genuinely i was trying to feel ki, okay you are feeling this and uh, uh, i just realized today that you know a part of the conflict was sorted uh, between like you know my two relatives just because i gave a listening ear that's all i did and um, and when in the afternoon i was reading this prayer uh, i felt so much solace and peace that yes uh, sometimes with others sometimes with you you know uh, uh, we uh, go through this and we seek validation and yet when i come through these lines that turn their gaze away from themselves and give them joy of being consecrated to thy work without calculation and mental reservation and also the line before that that uh, give them all O lord thy peace and light open their blinded eyes and their darkened understandings calm their futile worries and their vain anxieties 
you know like uh, this time when i was reading it in the afternoon it was obviously you know from uh, somebody else's perspective but i myself am in this situation so many times and uh, we uh, understand that uh, there's so much more to it and you know like uh, i just pray that uh, this divine peace and light is you know always there to guide me and everyone you know it's so beautiful what mother has written in this prayer yeah that's my reflection thank you so much Shweta. yes yeah it's a blessing to read even just you know just go through the words full of illumination it's just a blessing yeah yeah anyone who wants to go next yes jasmine jasmine is sharing this prayer invokes so much compassion in oneself yeah yeah anyone who wants to share next on this prayer Yeah, Monika ji, if I can go ahead. Yes, please, Jishan ji. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the f I think the first few lines uh, struck me as uh, very beautiful and very relevant. When I read them, that, O oh Lord, thy peace and light, open their blinded eyes and darkened understandings, calm their futile worries and vain anxieties. And this is very apt for not only for others, for all of us. Most of our worries are futile and most of our anxieties are vain. And this is uh, also, I always, uh, I see that you prayers are linked. If Because in front of eternity, in front of infinity, we are just little specks of dust. And why we are so much worried, why you are cause of such so much disharmony is we are concentrated in us like they say you know, that the spider feels that he has weaved his world so we think that this world we have created or at least this world is rotating around us because of ourselves to serve our self-interest for us or whatever be our ideal be or whatever be the clan or tribe or organization where we belong but the moment we start thinking about others, the moment we rather forget ourselves, the things become extremely simple. And Mother somewhere said that, Oh Lord, give me love, that love in which one forgets oneself. Because when one forgets oneself, that's the beginning of the joy. And that's the end of all anxieties. The moment you forget yourself, all this petty anxieties, this petty quarrels, most of the things what we are seeing, somebody is fighting or somebody is discontent because he or she has not got something not happening as per order. If we assume that we have nothing in control, nothing will happen as per our wish, and it is not supposed to be, that is forgetting oneself, then immediately we will understand that how beautiful wonderful that life is and how grateful we should become and when we get into that state that we are not thinking about ourselves that calm that calmness descends upon us and that is why just a second i'll just reduce the brightness yeah and that is why mother is saying oh let all Tears be wiped away, all sufferings relieved, all anguish dispelled, and let calm serenity dwell in every heart and powerful certitude strengthen every mind. It's a very beautiful line. Powerful certitude strengthen every mind. And what is this powerful stress? certitude? The certitude of the love, the certitude of something higher which is behind us. The moment we stop thinking in ourselves and know that this creation has been there for 4 billion years. This creation will be there for how long, we don't know. We are just there for a very brief period of time. We get a certitude that things are running fine. 
let thy life flow through all like a regenerating stream that all may turn to thee and draw from that contemplation the energy for all victories we the moment we feel that okay there we have a purpose there is a divine who is guiding us and he has a plan for each one of us you will feel energized you will not feel pessimistic about anything or discontent and we will feel that energy that joy that everything is going for a higher cause and we will have that elan or that high feeling in our life that is what i wanted to share here yeah thank you so much jishnu ji yeah i think this self forgetfulness is really very very beautiful and very powerful even uh, i think we get the glimpses of self forgetfulness many a times in human love also and i think as we i think in mother and shorobindo it comes like human love is a preparation you know one of the rungs of the ladder towards a purified love much and much you know going towards divine love so yeah it's beautiful self forgetfulness yes yeah anyone who would like to maybe if even if you resonated with a couple of lines if you would like to share anything okay so i'm assuming there is no deflection at the moment and hence taking it forward so in case anyone gets any insight please to unmute and share so let's go over it one more time and then we'll go to the next one give them all o lord thy peace and light open their blinded eyes and their darkened understanding calm their futile worries and their vain anxieties i was uh, reading something from dr reddy dr anand reddy and he was sharing something about divine compassion and grace and there he was sharing that divine grace is does not believe that suffering is necessary you know part of human existence so it is like you know the sh- sun is shining equally on everyone and just like that divine grace just falls equally on everyone and uh, soothes you know soothes and calms our being and our blinded eyes are as jishnu ji was pointing at you know whenever we are too self obsessed you know my needs my expectations my life i think it blinds us it really really blinds us and we become too self interested you know me my interests you know my ideas and opinions uh, must be carried forward i think it really really blinds our understanding darkens our understanding and futile worries again so the more i believe in my self as a separate self the more i believe in myself as a you know this uh, limited individuality which has to be protected from the rest of the world and you know taken care of who would take care of my, me if i don't take care of myself you know futile worries you know most of the time our thoughts are very repetitive in nature and we all have our patterns you know our thought patterns are set as if you know and we i think slowly we have to really if we want to work upon ourselves then we have to dig out and fish out our patterns what is the patterns that repeats in me be become conscious of our thought patterns vain anxieties i mean mother says that most of the we should not worry you know something like this that we should not worry because most of the things that we worry about actually don't even happen you know but the mind is so busy worrying around as if it has got nothing else to do 
you know and we love to be occupied oh my god i'm so busy you know as if the mind loves to be occupied all the time in vain anxieties and i had a little you know uh, something to share in the sense that i had a a little intense experience and in that there was a bit of you know whenever there is some external situation that becomes a bit overwhelming the thoughts about the situation bring you pain now i realized that when i experienced pain in my being and i chose not to go into the story in my head then it became really simple so what i did was that i stayed with my breathing i stayed conscious aware with my breathing and i stayed with the physical sensation of the pain that i was feeling so physically for example in the deep of my heart if i am feeling feeling uh, something like pain so i stayed with that pain along with breathing and i refused to fuel the thinking with my active support and it was almost like really miraculously i can say in a few hours which i thought maybe would be a few days in a few hours i did not even realize how how it happened i was just lying down along with consciously aware of my breathing and consciously aware of the physical sensation of the pain and whenever the thoughts came about the story in my head i refused to give it any attention i just something in me chose i am not going to give it now attention i just want to be with the physical sensation and when i got up after an hour or so something in me had shifted and i don't have words what really happened how it shifted but i was my easy self again and the thing was not bothering me anymore so this made me realize that we often talk about our pain and our suffering you know and we don't realize unconsciously that i am the one who is fueling the suffering by thinking about it excessively you know vain anxieties futile worries i am just fueling it with my thoughts and i am not realizing that this is the fuel i am giving it and that construct becomes more solid and solid and solid and it overwhelms me further more while if i do not give the construct the image uh, when i say construct is the thought construct you know i am fueling it with my thoughts and feelings and making it more or more real but when i choose not to do that when i stay with the raw sensation in the body okay this pain is there let me stay with the breathing consciously aware of it then it comes and passes by just like a fleeting guest you know then i am not partnering in the crime so this was a, a very beautiful experience for me to realize that i am the one who chooses to fuel the construct imaginary construct in my mind and hence elongate my suffering and i am the one who would uh, say no i am not going to fuel this worry by my active thinking i am just going to stay with the breathing and in the body i am not going to leave myself so that really helped me you no know, and this also helped me to turn the gaze away from me because uh, the story obviously whenever a story goes in my head it's in relation to somebody other and myself you know myself is always involved so this also helped me to turn the focus back in the present moment whatever is there and to not be worrying excessively about me my life my story my drama you know my relationships so this turn their gaze away from themselves give them the joy of being consecrated to thy work without calculation or mental reservation and i think this often we have iterated uh, you know but can be said enough times that to give ourselves to something more than us where we become very little we become very little in front of that work that is in front of us Uh, so that my worries don't matter much they may be there because as human beings we will have worries and challenges from time to time but they don't matter much you know, in front of the work in hand let thy beauty flower in all things awaken thy love in all hearts so that thy eternally progressive order may be realized upon earth and thy harmony be spread until the day all becomes thyself 
in perfect purity and peace now when we talk of harmony you know when we talk of peace in peace there is a stillness you know there is a settlement when we talk of harmony there also comes the picture of multitude you know there are like there are four people in the house so we need harmony if there is one person in the house there is peace but when there are four people who are living together that's where we need this progressive you know order each one needs to work on oneself progressively baby steps so that a deeper and deeper harmony can be reached so it's very simple to live in my own meditation cave and be okay with myself although even that is not easy but yet you know it's simpler but when i have to live with 50 people in a home then what is the status of the being what is the state of of consciousness how we are living in harmony is there peace and harmony amongst ourselves i think that's our challenge that's our challenge and that's also a kind of a reflection of our spiritual maturity that the more ripening happens in the being the more we are able to be harmonious with each other so the harmony be spread until the day all becomes thyself so the divine is fully able to manifest itself in each action word thought feeling in perfect purity and peace so there are no veils anymore oh let all tears be wiped away as we were sharing in the beginning that the divine grace doesn't feel that there is a need for suffering you know in order to grow without suffering also we can go sunlit path let all tears be wiped away all suffering relieved all anguish dispelled and why because we have each one of us has faced anguish we all, we have all faced suffering and we know that although we may ripe through suffering there are happier and joyous ways also to live and to mature let calm serenity dwell in every heart and powerful certitude strengthen every mind i think jishnu ji was pointing at this line the powerful certitude of divine love that yes it is there and it is protecting taking care of each one of us we are in the divine being we are not separate from the divine being <clears throat> let thy life flow through all like a regenerating stream that all may turn to thee and draw from that contemplation the energy for all victories so this regenerating stream is present in each one of us as stillness as the silence in the background as the light in the depth of heart and as intuitive knowledge insights grace blessing this all this regenerating steam is present 24/7 it is present if we notice it so i'm going to read a few lines and then we'll end this prayer and go to the next one from uh, a tibetan book which i've been reading so they talk about inner refuge inner refuge inner stillness and this is a little paragraph that i'll read to successfully engage in meditation methods that support positive change in your life to truly transform your confusion into wisdom you need to con- connect with the healing space of the being the first step in the process of transformation is to shift from your allegiance with the uh, with the karmic pain body which is you know our story which is all me and my story and my drama so our identity usually is fixated on the story so he is saying that the first step is to shift the identity from this pain body or the story the person with the problem to openness simply put you are moving closer to your authentic self and further away from your ego so whenever i am in the story connected totally identified with the drama and in my head then i am identifying with my story with the pain body and when i am a bit detached from that then i am closer to my authentic self so he says from the beginning just be still in your body 
and mother talks about this stillness mother says just call peace in the body call stillness in the body and be absolutely still when you are lying down on the bed for example you should be just as a towel is kept on the bed it does not move just like that still absolutely still by being still you will feel directly whatever you are experiencing in your body in the moment because you are not moving away from it so if there is a pain and there is a physical sensation of that emotional or mental pain you will be able to connect with that because i am not moving away from the body you might become aware of discomfort or agitation stay with it just be with it directly experience your body every moment of connection to the stillness of your body is a moment of healing this is something you can do throughout the day as well as something you do when you first sit down to meditate stop be still feel your body if you are able to be still you are entering through the door of the body rather than exiting from it because whenever we are in thoughts we are exiting the door of the body especially repetitive thoughts with practice you can discover the inner refuge of stillness and this inner refuge of stillness is what we can also in one of the ways we can say that it is the regenerating stream through which we can gain energy power recharge our batteries for whatever we have to go through in life so i think this quiet time with ourselves being intimately in connection with our deeper self uh, i think its importance cannot be stressed enough yeah so let us uh, if it's okay move on to the next prayer january 8 so anyone who would like to read and then share their reflections if someone just wants to read that's also okay so snehi or claudia or jasmine in case you just want to read any one of you since you're not sharing at the moment so feel free just to read the prayer and then others can share if you don't want to okay shall i pick a name <laughs> Okay what about Snehi Snehi would you like to read the prayer uh, Do you have the capacity to read unmute and read In case you are there Yeah I'll read Okay beautiful yeah. January 8 1914 Let us shun the paths that are too easy and ask no effort the paths which give us the illusion of having reached our goal let us shun that negligence which opens Are you able to see his name? Opens the door. Yeah, sorry, I'll continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, let us shun the paths that are too easy and ask no effort. The paths which give us the illusion of having reached our goal. Let us shun the negligence which opens the door to every downfall. That complacent. self admiration which leads to every abyss let us understand that however great may have been our efforts 
our struggles, even our victories, compared with the distance yet to be traveled, the one we have already covered is nothing, and that all are equal. Infinite, infinitesimal grains of dust or identical stars before eternity. But thou art the conqueror of all obstacles, the light that illuminate that illumines all ignorance, the love that van vanquishes all pride, and no error can persist in front of thee. Yeah, thank you so much, Nehi. Yes. Yeah, anyone who would like to share their reflections? Kindly unmute. Yeah, Monica ji, if I can go ahead. Please, <clears throat> yes, please. Yeah, so reading this, I feel this is as if you know, like a motivational prayer which mother is they ask, which mother is making to the divine that let us not let us not choose the path that is easy, which means and if we we all know right, I mean whenever we see any successful journey in any field, whether be it in form of any form of sadhana, sadhana is just a method in any farm, be it business, games, literature, for any one of them, we all know at least it takes uh, 10,000 hours of dedicated practice to be a master in anything. And she is exactly saying that let us not choose any path that is easy. Any path or such a path which does not seek any effort. And mother later somewhere spoke to children. She said a person who doesn't know how to make effort doesn't feel the joy. She said that because people who make effort, they're making an effort, and she, I, I will find out that passage and share here. It's a very beautiful passage. She said, people who are making effort, by dint of their effort, they come in contact with universal forces, and that gives a joy. And she said, there are some people who doesn't know how to make an effort, because, which, which she has explained here, which I will cover, they don't know how to make an effort and they don't feel any joy in their life. At times, we have also seen in our, in our lives people who are very satisfied. I won't say satisfied, but I won't say that they do. honestly, in some way, they might not have much challenges and they also don't feel much joy. We have seen some similar people in their lives. And she says, what happens when we are complacent, when we are complacent and we are self admiring ourselves we are complacent and satisfied with what we have achieved that is to some extent like the path to degradation because mother said the moment you are satisfied you have stopped progressing that doesn't mean she is speaking about dissatisfaction here she said satisfaction means the moment you are complacent about the progress you have made about the learnings that needs to be done or in any form, any any skill, the moment you are satisfied, complacent, you will stop progressing. And that leads to downfall. Or naturally, she has to explain whether it's downfall, any any negligence. The thing is, we we are sharp or we are vigilant because we want to progress. We care for things, that is why we are vigilant. The moment we are negligent, that is, we don't care for it. Either we are ignorant, that is, we don't understand what is happening, or, or we are so indolent that we are not observing what is happening to us. And in both the ways, whether you are ignorant or you are lazy, and mother has said somewhere that laziness is a tremendous form of ignorance. When it is like that, it leads to degradation. We have seen it's happening to countries, the moment they are, they stay, stop staying sharp, they stop being reactive. The, uh, the societies, countries, cities, they have degraded it in history. And same is which will happen to the future. Let us understand that however great may have been our efforts, our struggles, even our victories, 
compared to the distance yet to be traveled, the one we have already covered is nothing and that all are equal infinitesimal gains of dust or identical stars before eternity. And here I wanted to share one little anecdote. I think there were some lectures of Nidad Baran which, uh, or Amal Kiran, which I was reading. And there he said that what Shurabindo has done. And he said that the distance we've, it's so difficult to reach the level of over mind. And after that super mind. And then he was telling the students that do you, do you realize the distance between over mind and super mind, how big the gap is? It is not like that it is at first floor and this is a second floor. And he said that in Savitri, there were lines which said the secret that if, when you are at the top of over mind, you see the super mind as the distant stars at the end of the horizon. That is the goal. And just imagine like Shurabindo who, is, who, who started doing this alone, everything. For him, he reached this over mind and then he is saying, that is the goal. If we read some of his early letters to his brother, he is saying, after 10 years, I see something about it. After four years, I realized I made a mistake. Can you imagine? After four years, he is saying, after four years of work, I realized I made a mistake. And he told his uh, disciples, for you all, it will not be so difficult because we are making this. For you all, it will be easier. But just imagine, he is saying, after four years, I realized I made a mistake. After 10 years, I realized I am at the lower rung of the top three. And then after over mind, he is saying that the super mind, the distance is like a distant star. That, if you understand that, if you always remember what they have done, if you remember this example, it will always keep, make us, keep us humble. That honestly, that we are very, very far from the goal. And there is nothing that should make us to be um, self-complacent, which mother has said here, self-complacent -com uh, and admire ourselves. That should not make us criticize ourselves, but the thing is that should not make us stop. Because, and the, that other thing is, because however big we are, whatever we have done, in front of eternity, we are specks of dust. For thou art the conqueror of all obstacles. And this, I think Mother is saying, but there are two ways I see this. Or rather, the, how I see this is, because ultimately, it is the divine who is conquering all obstacles. Even if we are making the effort through us, it is the divine who is making conquering all obstacles. The light that illumines all ignorance, the love that vanquishes all pride, and no error can persist in front of thee. That it is ultimately the divine who is working through us when we are making any higher, when we are working in the map of higher aspiration, it is he who is working through us in front of whom, we, whom no ignorance can start stand, no error can persist, and the love that transforms all pride. When there is love, there is no pride. It is that uh, we have all seen that the greatest, greatest sadhaks, greatest saints, the wisest ones are very, very humble because of their love for the divine, because they understand that what they have done, even among the greatest scientists, one, some of them are atheists. That is from my side here. Yeah, thank you so much, Jishnuji. I think this aspect of uh, humility, I think this is absolutely, Mother also shares at many, many places, uh, the absolute requirement on this path. And not a, you know, like one, when one hears about humility, one may pretend to be humble, but inside one is not. So not that kind of, but a true, true kind of humility, I think. Yes, so, so important. Yes. And I, you know, totally resonate the, the deeper, the since more senior, you know, if, if I can use the word senior people who have, for example, you know, being in the sadhana for many, many years, we see this quality in them that uh, if they are truly realized, actually, they appear very, very ordinary, very ordinary. Yes, there is a sense of lightness and simplicity about them. Yeah, so true.
Hi, Monica. Yeah, hi, Claudia, please. Yeah. I don't know if you hear me well. Yeah, today we hear you well. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, this just reminds me so much sometimes of my life when I try to be like, I, I don't know if you know the story of uh, Quixote, de la Mancha. Uh, maybe it's you can a, tell us, you can maybe share the story. It's a, it's a really big book written by Cervantes in Spanish. Uh, this guy is a gentleman that reads, reads a lot, a lot. And then certainly he decides to go into a journey and defends uh, all the people that uh, are in trouble. And in the journey, he finds different things, yes? I'm not going to tell you all the story because it's very long. <laughs> uh, the case is that this gentleman um, is uh, a, uh, have a companion that is Sancho, that is so, is. Uh, the representing of the ignorance. <clears throat> and Sancho is always um, making a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, he doesn't know how to speak, he doesn't know how to relate with people, but also he protects him, he protects uh, the gentleman from crazy things, yes? Because sometimes this gentleman confuses uh, confused uh, certain trees with uh, monsters, for example, yes? So sometimes this happened to me because uh, I, I want to protect uh, certain people from, I want to defend people, yes? I, I just go and scream to others. And I think that is the easy part, you know, because to scream to people or to try to, because it's like my future, you know? I, I want to protect them. Uh, and instead of use my intellectual center and go and do something else, you know, with that energy, I just go and confront the, the villain, you know? But that make me, in my case, it's not good, but because it makes me be uh, ill, you know? So I don't know if I, I am okay telling you all this story or I confuse you, uh, but no. I, I, oh, uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's understandable. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, yeah. okay. So, because yes, uh, sometimes uh, I have this that, uh, I try to protect someone else and I don't protect myself. So I think this is also the path that we should not go, yes? That we say, oh yes, all these people need protection. Yes, yes, let's go and let's do it. But then we forget about our soul and our own work, yes? Mm, yeah, yeah. And so, because we, <laughs> I don't know what, what we try to be the heroes, so I don't know what, <laughs> yes. Mm. Uh, so it's just like that. Yeah. And I think we should think more and leave all this to Krishna, yes, or mm. to, to the Lord or to Brahma, to, to the higher level. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, just, I leave it here. Just I wanted to, to share this reflection. Would yes, you? yes. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Mm. I think to each is ho his own, you know, as they say, to each is his own. Because everyone, every individual has a unique journey. And although each one of us is nothing but a grain of dust in front of what actually there is, but each one is a special grain of dust, you know, in some sense. And each one has a very unique path. And for someone, the path may be reaching out to others. For someone, and that would be the journey for the person itself also, you know, the progress, the 
inner work would also be done through that journey of connecting with others while for others maybe just living a life very kind of inward life uh, not much social connection that might be their call you know so i think it depends on what is our calling in that particular life and uh, as long as i am having this inner progress which i will know you know each one of us knows when we are inwardly progressing because uh, we see our obstacles we see our weaknesses and then we also see ourselves for a, you know taking a baby step and transcending at least that part of the weakness what is in front of us maybe another one comes up later but that part of weakness we see ourselves transcending taking a step back detaching going within and that is that gives us joy you know this progress gives us joy but yet we know that it's nothing in front of what is to be realized as shri shri bindu himself has said that this journey of integral yoga is from one realization to a greater realization to a greater and there is no end to the realizations you know so if i have had a particular spiritual experience you know many a times ego jumps at a spiritual experience and becomes very elated and kind of puts a medal on itself that see i have this spiritual realization but then we go down again you know because each realization is nothing in front of what as you know in the distance yet to be traveled i think snee is also put this out that in front of what is yet to be achieved and that just shows our potential that we are just like divine is infinite our potential is infinite i think instead of getting sad about it the distance of yet to be traveled if one has an adventurer kind of a spirit one can be really joyous about it because if i am a forest adventure then would i like the adventure to be ending very soon you know so a small little adventure of 10 minutes but if i am a true adventurer then i would say okay you know let us see how long it takes me forward so this true adventurous spirit if one can leave uh, have it you know alive in oneself i think how does it matter what is the distance because the journey itself is so progressive and so beautiful each day can be so joyous if we begin to work upon ourselves our weaknesses and transcend them uh, that there is no end to this journey and that actually creates more joy that wow you know every day we have look we have something to look forward to you know some new weakness will come up some new ugliness will come up and i'll be able to see and work on it so i think yeah it's it's also uh, a matter of joy uh, yeah in one sense monica ji one thing yeah <clears throat> i wanted to share and uh, has claus shared this story of this uh, sancho panja and don quote mother specifically i was reading one uh, just piece uh, yesterday and mother specifically said that so sancho panja was that assistant which the, and he was a realist or a pessimist whose view was that nothing will change and mother said that that is exactly the type of attitude one should not have and she said coming to the other way that at time we meet megalomania she exactly used the term at time we meet megalomania that who has big plans but probably they have not been able to do and she said for them i can say probably they are in contact with some part of their future destiny which has not yet been realized but they have big dreams and she said for such people that hold on to your dream don't kill your dream because if you are killing your dream you are killing your higher destiny you hold on to your dream and be patient when the circumstances are right they will manifest that's what i wanted to share from that yeah thank you jishnu ji i think it's really very powerful if we because all of us you know in on our individual paths we have you know certain inclinations and dreams and 
what we would like something higher and lofty you know which it, it could not be really high and lofty but you know for for us it's high and lofty which we want to achieve or have in life or do in life but at the moment as you said is not possible and to hold on to it i think this is really really beautiful and also important not to kill it as you shared because uh, if we are perseverant about it you know and kind of keep it hold on to it inwardly inwardly and be patient with it things really happen you know which and they take their own time as kabir says ritu ay phal hoy so he says that when the right season strikes then the fruit arrives the fruit does not arrive before season so and we don't know when the season is ripe for that particular dream so yeah that's very powerful yes yeah so on this uh, prayer uh, there is one little paragraph on uh, humility by the mother i'll just read a few lines from it maybe it makes sense uh, to connect with this uh, prayer mother is sharing humility a perfect humility is the condition for all realization the mind is so cocksure it thinks it knows everything understands everything and if ever it acts through idealism to serve a cause that appears noble to it it becomes even more arrogant and intransigent and it is almost impossible to make it see that there might be something still higher beyond its noble conceptions and its great altruistic or other ideals so you know this cultism you know how we become trapped in our rigid ideas of high and lofty you know <laughs> that also needs basically we need a lot of vigilance at all times and mother is sharing con- continuing humility is the only remedy i am not speaking of humility as conceived by certain religions with this god that belittles his creatures and only likes to see them down on their knees when i was a child this kind of humility revolted me mother shares and i refused to believe in a god that wants to belittle his creatures that see i am the one and you are all sinners and on your knees so mother is sharing that this revolted her i don't mean that kind of a humility but rather the recognition that one does not know that one knows nothing and that there may be something beyond that presently appears to us at the truest the most noble or disinterested the true humility consists in constantly referring oneself to the lord in placing all before him when i receive a blow and there are quite a few of them in my sadhana my immediate a spontaneous reaction like a spring is to throw myself before him the lord and to say thou lord without this humility i would never have been able to realize anything i think in prayers and meditations we have constantly uh, i think many many examples of this by the mother and i say i only to make myself understood but in fact i means the lord through this body the instrument when you begin living this kind of humility it means you are drawing nearer to the realization it is the condition the starting point mother says it is the starting point what beauty so profound very yeah. beautiful yeah i think uh, nature also helps a lot uh, whenever we have you know something in front of us you know as humongous as an ocean for example we go to pondicherry and you know these waves are just striking on the corners you know, the shore all the times with humongous amount of you know sound and almost like a lullaby i think it's it also makes us realize we are so little in front of what there is so little while living in these flats and you know in our own little apartments we 
you know the ego begins to feel really proud and really big you know my work my office my job i am the boss you know or whatever but when we go out in nature that also really helps looking at a sunset or maybe in vast mountains you know so magnanimous that also makes us realize how little we are how little we are no matter what we have achieved and this is i think from time to time it's very important to connect to this along with our possibilities to also connect with the littleness you know with the not in a, any derogatory sense but the fact of it that we are nothing even earth as a whole when we look from far beyond you know galaxies earth is nothing but a spot you know like a tiny speck of dust amongst the stardust and sometimes our problems when they are becoming too too heavy then we if we go back and back and we trace our you know uh, kind of uh, road through galaxies and traversing them and look at ourselves and the, our our problem from that end i think then we see that it's so small so silly and so small and then one can just relax enjoying the present moment yeah yeah i think uh, monica you even shared one uh, uh, forward na uh, from uh, i think i just read it, it uh, now what you were sharing na resonates a lot mm-hmm. this world is not moving around its axis with the sole object of catering to the material needs of humanity nor is superficial happiness or worldly success the aim of earthly existence the only quest of the soul on this earth is its growth as it passes through repeated births shri arvind so yeah i'm yeah. reminded of this yeah thank you yes oh monica yes please yeah um i'm sorry that i'm very insistent <laughs> uh just um, about this that say let's not go for the easy path you know let's make efforts and things uh it can be taken in in two levels no in a spiritual way yes or in a material way no uh i mean in a spiritual inner way is like observing hours or every day and what we do yes in if i have fear in something or if i confront the 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 area in yes or if i not confront it because i have fear so i'm not going to do it no so then i go in for the easy way yes um so is there uh, many levels where we can approach this maybe i i don't know if the mother is more i think it's she's more spiritual yes but yeah. she likes to also to speak about life uh everyday life mm-hmm. uh like like you say when you, we go to work we our ego goes there to the office yes mm. so sometimes to have a office is easy yes to have a, a job is easy is easy mm-hmm. easy path yes mm-hmm. sometimes not depends of the person yes so is a it, mostly a work of uh, each each person but for this reason also you need a group that tell you hey you are doing you are going in the easy path because one self uh, cannot photograph oneself yes it's uh, very difficult mm. we we just say oh i am doing right i am doing very good work in your work yes mm. so we need someone else that tell us mm. hey hey you are not doing well there mm. observe yourself no? mm. uh, i don't know yeah it's uh, something yeah. that yeah. that i see in this prayer yes yes i think resonates what you are sharing and this also remind me of uh, it reminds me of uh the story of uh, jatsunma tenzing palmo you know when she was meditating in a cave and when she came out of this cave after many years so 
she was suggested by uh, her guru her master to maybe start a nunnery for female nuns you know nuns because we had men monasteries for monks but hardly any good nunneries for nuns and then she was asking maybe a christian catholic priest about this maybe maybe a friend she was discussing with him and he said that uh, when she asked whether she should go for it or not go for it because she was mostly inwardly on her own journey so to start an nunnery means interacting with a lot of people and taking responsibilities so the priest said that well you know if you choose to start the nunnery it will be difficult it will be more challenging but i think it's be it will be worth it but if you choose the other way which is your own inward path uh, just that and not interacting and taking responsibility it will it, it's a little easier path not that easy little easier and less of challenge so then he had suggested that you know uh, that go for the difficult part path and i think this is our test also as a we were sharing in the beginning that it's a reflection of our spiritual maturity that if some inward maturity has really happened really ripening process has happened again we have to go a long way but if some things have, have happened in in within us then it will be easier relatively easier for us to make harmony amongst where are we living you know or maybe we are working in an office so being in harmony with the people in office it's very easy to be in harmony and peace when i am meditating all by myself in my home not that easy but relatively you know because things will come up from within and there will be discomforts but to uh, to test our patience to test our anger to test our tolerance all love and compassion in the middle of this group in which we work i think that is further more challenging that how can we achieve that and harmony at workplace harmony at family in family harmony in relationships you know i think this is these are paths which are not that easy of course there are difficult paths but uh, mother says that let us shun those paths which are too easy and i want no effort so i agree with you as you were sharing that it's also inward that when i refuse to look at my fears anxieties worries and weaknesses that's relatively easy but again it will give me disturbance later on and if i choose to confront them choose to see them then i am being i am connecting with my inner strength and courage and just like that if i uh, i mean multitude of people are around me and i am working with them in harmony just like tignath han you know he just passed away uh, lately he just left his body and people were sharing that in the plum village in france where many westerners are living together uh, what a exemplification of living in harmony that is how beautifully people live uh, even westerners who are usually very individualized in nature and concerned only with themselves how with so much of love care and compassion they live under one roof so yes i think that's yeah can be taken in these two ways yeah okay so anything more anyone wants to add i think let's uh, take up the last few lines but thou art the conqueror of all obstacles the light that illumines all ignorance the love that vanquishes all pride and no error can persist in front of thee i think this is uh, so this reminds me of when we stay as open awareness when i am the light of consciousness consciously with, uh, with and the quality of that is a discerning eye i think in front of that discerning light of consciousness nothing no error can say stay and sooner or later all will be caught and put in light and transform and transmute yeah so i think we have to do our job connecting with our true self all the time as much as possible staying as this light of consciousness that sees everything in us that is aware of everything yeah yeah jishnu ji uh, there is a request from jasmine to share the words that you shared 
if you could later on share in the whatsapp group yes just one sec let me see okay i'll surely share okay Perfect. okay thank you thank so, you let's close here thank you so much everyone for joining in yeah thank you thank you bye bye thank you very much thank bye you bye, bye.